All right, we're going to do a real quick video here showing some of these connections I was talking about in the Devil's Triangle study. And uh, just making sure the audio is going there. And uh, here we have uh, Andersnake here, 2008, Trueborn Sons of Liberty down here, which I talked about in the studies uh, or the study on the Devil's Triangle thing. Here's the actual website. Uh, this is Anderson's website. We have copies um, of this. The site was created by Stephen L. Anderson, pastor of Faith Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. I mean, this is his website. Uh, there's no question about that. Is there anything on this that we're going to... Well, um, go to the read link. Okay. There's kind of a... Masonic. What is Skull and Bones Masonic logo. Yep. Right there. And uh, here's the mission of them. Um, you know, whatever you want to say there. Okay, anything else on here? Um, the, uh, well, the, the links. He lists Chuck Baldwin in Fours, Prison Planet, his, uh, propaganda film, Repentance mm -hmm. Blacklist. Yep. Uh, his... Uh, daughter churches of his Wait, system. See if this is still the old one or is this the new one? Oh, we'll wait there. I don't know. It's taking a long time. Party. Okay, that's the new one there. Um, we'll get back. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just a, a bunch of gallery weird stuff there. He's got his patriotic song on here he's got a bunch of things um and even a cartoon about his uh well that's probably just a cartoon about some patriot thing i don't know if right. that's him with his his contact information for his church so okay. it's his church information right so then the other thing i mentioned was the black regiment thing here you have uh, chuck baldwin live the black regiment and uh, you're going to be shocked by some of the people on the, this list here. Um, just I'm not going to go over all of these different ones here. Uh, uh, T. Coleman, that's Timothy Coleman. Tim that's Coleman, right there. There's Tim Coleman in the marching design. Hack graduate. Anti, yeah, he's a graduate of Hiles Anderson College. Um, so you got him there you have Stephen Anderson right there faithful word Baptist Church it's the same one he's a member of this black regiment thing um, well what's that FR Jason O. Race hmm what's an Anglican, Anglican Church, Church father doing on this list well, with Anderson 8 IFB yep there's other things Greg Stevens some of these names I'm not real familiar with. Actually, most of the names I'm not real familiar with, but there's a couple here I wanted to share real quickly. Um, that's going to, you know, I thought that was interesting. Pastor Diane. Oh, boy. You know. What's I a mean, female pastor doing on here? Yeah, I mean, Anderson is yoked up with a couple different uh, things showing, um, you know, or with, you know, women in ministry and stuff like this. It's kind of interesting. He's quite the hypocrite. But uh, Pastor Sam Adams here, this guy is a post- Trevor, uh, replacement theology, the whole thing. I've had go-arounds with this guy. Uh, he's quite an idiot. But um, you get down through here. Uh, trying to see where the other ones are. Um, Did you? Oh, you must have passed. John Weaver is another one of these wing nuts. I've talked about him. He had a thing about the rapture of the wicked. First Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18 is about the wicked being taken to judgment. Like it seems to have messed a dead in Christ, you know. Chuck uh, Baldwin's own church is on here somewhere. Yeah. Lordship Church, I thought was kind of interesting. <laughs> you know, Anderson's all against Lordship Salvation, supposedly, but then he turns around and he's part of something like this. It's like, yeah, okay. Oh, let's see, where is it? David Hoffman, purewordsatjuno.com. I've recommended his study Bible, and I find it rather disgusting that he's on this list. And uh, you need to get off of this thing there, David. Pretty crazy. Um, 
Uh, well, there's, there's a... another father from Iowa. That's pretty interesting. Where? What? Go up a little bit. Right there. Yeah. Father Samuel Samuel Doty from Dubuque, Iowa. Yep. What's another father doing on this list with Anderson, an IFB preacher? Yep. Oh, there's there's another one on here I know. Pastor Dan Harden oh, of uh, Gateway Anabaptist Church. Uh, you know, he definitely knows who I am and, and I know who he is and things. I help them with some of their video type of stuff, you know. You know, he should not be on here. Mm -hmm. And this black regiment thing, you know, some of these guys, I'm hoping that they're just ignorant. Uh, but I would never be yoked up with an organization that has anything to do with this. Chuck Baldwin and Steven Anderson oh, and some of these other guys. Oh, boy. <laughs> yep. That sounds Catholic. There's a whole bunch of stuff on here. Um, there you have Montana, uh, Pastor Chuck Baldwin. He's in the thing. Um, where's another one there? Oh, there's, I think there's like two more I know on here. I wanted to make a point. I mean, Billy Crone, oh, <laughs> you know, boy. silly Billy Crone. I've done different things about that guy too. He's a little charismatic nut. Um, Meaning charismatic personality. I know he's not part of the charismatic, you know, system, but you know, he's a little faker. Oh, Bob Martin. Uh, where's the other one at? Trying to get to it here. Come on, Nathan Cole. I mean, some of you might even know some of the who these people are and stuff. You know, I don't know all these names. It always looked like Fenninger there. Yeah, really. It's kind of interesting. Oh yeah, here's another one. Pastor Joey Faust, the guy that teaches the part of the body of Christ, the carnal Christians in the body of Christ is, will be actually in hell for the thousand year millennial kingdom. So part of the body of Christ is on earth, part of it's in hell, according to this guy. Um, pretty crazy. There's another one, there's a guy uh, that's real big on the whole anti-501c3 thing. Uh, his name escapes me right now, but I saw his names on here too. Wouldn't he be in Wisconsin? Um, oh, yeah, there's another guy here, Pastor Butch Paul, another one of these patriot posty toasties from West Virginia. Um, gets people all riled up and, pre you know, prepping and the whole deal and Wait, all this other stuff. Is that the guy you're talking about? That's anti-501c3? That Matthew True. Hello, no. I've heard that name, but I'm not familiar. No, um, Greg Dixon, I think it is. Yeah, right there, Dr. Greg Dixon, you know, and I mean, we'll just go down to the end of the list here so you can see if you might notice anybody else on there. Um, you know, just crazy here. Okay, there it is. So it's kind of weird, but uh, I also mentioned about rebel media and this whole thing. And my wife here found out some pretty interesting stuff. This guy here, foul mouth, very filthy guy, uh, Gavin McInnes, uh, one of the commentators and things on rebel media. Mm -hmm. And interesting thing he says here, abortion is morally wrong and it's sexist and racist too. And he says, I'm a Catholic, I'm even a member of the Knights of Columbus, and I'm pro-life. Goes on there and stuff. And I understand he does things sarcastically and, and jest and whatever else, but when you look at the guy's uh, background here. Here he is, Canadian right-wing provocateur Gavin McInnes at forefront of street fighting trend in U.S. political protest. Okay, just going to get down through here and just show you a couple things. Um, what's that thing about? His. Yeah. Um, they even have a spin-off organization, the Fraternal Order of the Alt Knights, that McInnes described as his military division. Hmm. Uh, thought that was kind of interesting, but 
let's go down here. Is it? Uh, His education. Yeah, born in England to Scottish parents. He was uh, four when the family immigrated to Canada and settled in Ottawa. McGinnis studied at Carleton University in his hometown, then at Montreal's Concordia. Okay, what is Concordia? Here you have Concordia, Montreal. All right, and uh, you can see basically there, what are we reading here? Um, okay, the union of two very different institutions of higher education has led to an exceptionally successful synthesis of compatible and timely values. Hmm, sounds like Hegelian dialectic speak. In 1974, tra two traditions came together, Loyola College, a Jesuit college Founded in 1848. Yep. Combined so, with Sir George Williams University. Okay. So in other words, this guy from Rebel, Rebel Media um, is Jesuit trained, Jesuit educated. Meaning he's a Jesuit. Yeah. According to the Jesuit's own standards. If yes. you've gone to a retreat, if you're a um, current student or alumni or whatever else, you're they call you a Jesuit. We okay. showed that in one of our other studies. So, and then the other one that I mentioned, the other one that uh, used to be with them, she just got fired a couple of days ago because of the, her being on the alt-right program, is this you know, woman here, Faith Goldie, fearless journalist and devout Catholic. Hmm. Okay, and she, she openly admits it. It's not even covered up. I mean, this, she openly admits it. And uh, what's this one about? This is her primary school alma mater. This is her boarding school before she went to her college and university training. Um, Haver, Havergal College was is a Church of England ladies college as you see right here. Um, <clears throat> while the Bishop Strachan School nearby on College Street had been offering girls education since 1867, it had a high church slash Trinity College affiliation, a more formal Anglican stream. Okay, so, and if you understand something here, you go, Anglican's not Catholic. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, it's just a different form of Catholicism. Right. That's all that it is. It's a joke that they're separate and things. No, it's not. But uh, let's continue here. This, this is, is another university that she went yes, to. I think it's either her bachelor's or master's degree program. I, I forget. Which, you know. It's one of her alma maters. Sure. And, uh, it says, uh, originally controlled by the Church of England, the university assumed the present name in 1850 upon becoming a secular institution. Okay. okay. So, again. again, you know, goes back to the Anglican type of system thing there. But she's obviously very, very devout in her Catholic beliefs and things like this. What is okay. this now? This is another one of her alma maters. Okay. And it's... Uh, it's now called Western University in Canada, but originally it was called a uh, um, university uh, Western Ontario. Okay. Now it's called Western University. Another Anglican type right. of thing. So. And it was chartered by an Anglican bishop, as you can read through this history here. Yep. Doesn't matter. So the whole point is, you know, that's that. But getting back to this whole thing of the, the Sons of Liberty deal, the True Born Sons of Liberty that, that right. uh, Anderson is a part of. Um, to go to this thing here? Yes. Okay. This is from a 1907 edition of the Cyclopedia of Fraternities. You can find this, you can download this, this book online. Just type in the title. And, um, okay, scroll down a little bit. Um, Compiled and edited by Albert Stevens, 1907, right there. Okay. Um, go to page, here I'll do it this way because it's easier than scrolling. Just what? click on the seven, highlight the seven, okay. Okay, this is page 12. The PDF pages are a little bit off from the original. But you have right here, 1765, Sons of Liberty entry, connected to the Sons of Tameni, connected to the Society of Red Men, and on down. You can, you can study the chart if you 
you know, but find right, this book on your own. But right there, Sons of Liberty. Mm -hmm. It's a Masonic system. And, uh, okay. Should make you think. Yeah. If we go to click on that, and I'll go to this page right here. Okay. Just a little bit of background information on how this fits in with the patriotic movement. Uh, chapter 7, the patriotic and political orders of this book. This is the general term by which reference is made to patriotic and political American secret orders or societies. Nativism, opposition to the alleged designs of the Roman Catholic hierarchy on the public school system in the United States, America for Americans, and loyalty to country, you know, God and country, for God and country, are or have been characteristics of most of them, okay? Um, on page, here, just highlight the 319 again, okay, um, <clears throat> There we go. Okay. Right here, we have information about the organization, the Sons of Liberty. Anderson's organization is a spinoff, just by another name. The Sons of Liberty, which became a secret revolutionary society, first appeared in Maryland in 1764 to, 16, to 1765, before the Revolutionary War, as organized opposition to taxation without representation, the Stamp Act, the Quartering Act, and other oppressive legislation. It was Colonel Isaac Barr, Barry, among, among the few members of Parliament who opposed the passage of the Stamp Act in 1765 and called the opposing parties in the colonies the Sons of Liberty. As declared in the official history, it was immediately afterward adopted by the Society and the early history of the colony of Maryland is authority for the statement that the Sons of Liberty claimed a genuine Indian chieftain as its tutelar saint and patron. Sounds Catholic to me. Tutelar saint and patron. And uh, scroll down here to this part right here. They used Indian ceremonials, nomenclature, and customs. So as far as, far as their rituals are concerned. Mm -hmm. And um, this other, okay, if we go to page 238 real quick, this is rather interesting. It's claimed to be, this organization right here claims to be the oldest, but really it's a virtual continuation of the Sons of Liberty formed prior to the War of the Revolution and the secret societies to which the latter gave birth. Well, Anderson's organization is a spinoff, and and Trueborn is is another Masonic thing, you know, Freeborn, Trueborn, whatever. That's another right. very Masonic type of a thing. And that's why they put black men in a separate, you know, Prince Hall Masonry because they're not Freeborn or Trueborn or whatever. Okay. You know. This is telling. And that's what they are saying. I'm not trying to be mean to black people. That's what they say. Right. The Sons of Liberty, 1764 to 83, before, and during, and after the Revolutionary War, was first a protest, like you saw on Anderson's website, protesting the different parts of his mm -hmm. mission, uh, a protest against British policy in the American colonies, and afterwards stood for independence. Um, how true and ironic with Anderson's organization. And... Um, One more reference here, 352. Okay, the book page is right here, but PDF has different page numbers. Sons of Liberty. This secret organization appeared in Maryland in 1764-65 as a protest against taxation without representation. Representation, the Stamp Act, the Quartering Act, and other British legislation affecting the American colonies, which was regarded as unjust and oppressive. And um, and so it goes down here and it talks more about how basically the 
this whole organization was spreading widely throughout the colonies and where they became the most radical leaders in the quarrel with Great Britain. Today, you know, radical leaders in quarreling with the government's unjust terms and promoters of the War of Independence in which many of them became distinguished leaders in the council and in the field. Just tweak that a little bit and you have all the people on the black regiment list with Chuck Baldwin and Anderson and different people on that list throughout the country affiliated with that. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very, very closely alliance between what this resource describes as the original Sons of Liberty Masonic organization and Anderson's True Born Sons of Liberty organization. And this even goes to talk about it is of more than passing import to add that records of a Masonic Lodge at Boston. Masonic Lodge. Show that the Lodge had been closed as most of the members were to take part in a quote unquote tea party. And it talks about Paul Revere's Masonic connections and how these, uh, the career of the Sons of Liberty in Massachusetts from 1765 to 74 will ever remain familiar by reason of the boarding of English vessels in Boston Harbor by 40 or 50 quote-unquote Mohawk Indians who empty the cargo of tea into the water as a protest against the tax on tea. And ironically, most if not all of them were Masons. So this whole tea party thing, Masonic. This whole Sons of Liberty, Masonic. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, that's why in the study I did on the whole Devil's Triangle thing, I mean, this stuff all ties together. You know, it's right there. All these different uh, things there again. And, you know, there's his website, the whole Chuck Baldwin thing. Um, it's the system of the Independent Fundamental Baptist Catholic Connection the military and the ultra alternative right you know far right wing conspiracy it's going to bring in right wing fascism that's the system of the antichrist i've been looking at this thing for years now and just like the more we research the more the lord shows us it just has become crystal clear so uh, that's going to be it for this video and you can certainly do more study on this in your own time um, there's so much more information that we have we could bring out and might bring out in the future on this whole thing. But for now, it's just, there it is. There's the proof I talked about in the other video. Now you've seen it. Um, be very careful who you're listening to. Uh, get away from this whole Baptist system thing. It's unscriptural and just you need to just get away from it. So that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.